Vitamin B12, or cobalamin, is found in animal products and synthesized by microorganisms. It has a very specific absorption mechanism. A protein called intrinsic factor, which is secreted by gastric parietal cells, binds to B12 in the duodenum after it's been released from the R protein by pancreatic enzymes. This intrinsic factor B12 complex binds to receptors in the distal ileum, which then absorb it into the enterocyte. Here, it loses intrinsic factor and binds to transcobalamin 2, which transports B12 through the bloodstream to the liver, where it's stored. B12 functions as a cofactor for homocysteine methyltransferase, which transfers the methyl group from methylated tetrahydrofolate to homocysteine, converting it to methionine. That reaction is shown here. It's also used to convert methylmalonyl coenzyme A to succinyl coenzyme A, which can then enter the TCA cycle. That reaction is also shown here on your summary of pathways page. This is how odd chain fatty acids and branch chain amino acids enter the TCA cycle. B12 deficiency can be caused by malabsorption, such as by celiac sprue, which causes inflammation which prevents the enterocytes from absorbing B12. Also, the parasite Diphylobothrum latum, which we'll talk about in the microbiology chapter, is a fish tapeworm which competes for B12 and lives in the small intestine, so patients with this parasite can become B12 deficient. Lack of intrinsic factor due to gastric bypass surgery or destruction of gastric parietal cells, which causes pernicious anemia, will prevent the absorption of B12. And an absent or dysfunctional terminal ileum, due to something like Crohn's disease or surgical removal, will also cause B12 deficiency. Severe B12 deficiency can also mimic folate deficiency, since without B12, methylated tetrahydrofolate can't be converted to regular tetrahydrofolate. This, in turn, can prevent de novo pyrimidine synthesis, which is described at the beginning of this chapter. Prolonged B12 deficiency has neurologic sequelae, which includes subacute combined degeneration of the posterior and lateral spinal columns due to a defect in myelin production. This manifests as ataxia and difficulty with proprioception and vibration sense. B12 and folate deficiency can both cause macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, which results in red blood cell mean cell volumes greater than 110, and hypersegmented neutrophils, like the ones shown in this picture. The Schilling test can be used to determine whether a patient's B12 deficiency is due to malabsorption, pernicious anemia, or dietary deficiency. In the first part of this test, patients are given radiolabeled B12 orally in an intramuscular injection of unlabeled B12. The unlabeled intramuscular B12 saturates the transcobalamin receptors in the liver, so that any labeled B12 that's absorbed from the diet will be excreted in the urine. A normal test is greater than 5% excretion of B12 in the urine within 24 hours, and an abnormal test would be less than 5% excretion within 24 hours. A normal test could indicate that the patient's B12 deficiency is due to an insufficient amount in their diet, since they are able to absorb it normally, whereas an abnormal test indicates a problem with absorption. To determine whether this is due to a problem in the intestine or lack of intrinsic factor from gastric parietal cells, the test is repeated, but this time intrinsic factor is given orally with B12. If this now produces a normal test, it means the patient has pernicious anemia, whereas if it's still abnormal, there's probably an absorption problem in the intestine. Folic acid is found in fruits and green leafy vegetables and performs one carbon transfer reactions in the form of tetrahydrofolate, or THF. Tetrahydrofolate is synthesized from dihydrofolate using the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase which adds hydrogens to it from NADPH. Tetrahydrofolate is important in the synthesis of pyrimidines in DNA and RNA. As was the case with B12, folate is stored in the liver. This storage makes it difficult for people with a normal diet to become deficient, but in fact this is the most common vitamin deficiency in the United States, since people don't eat enough green leafy vegetables. Deficiency can also be caused by some drugs, such as phenytoin, sulfonamides, or methyltrexate. Phenytoin prevents the absorption of folate. Sulfonamides inhibit an enzyme called dihydropteroid synthetase, which synthesizes a precursor of folate, and methotrexate and trimethoprim both inhibit dihydrofolate reductase, which is this enzyme. The most important time to not be folate deficient is during pregnancy, since folate deficiency can cause neural tube defects. As I mentioned before, folate deficiency can cause macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. However, it can be distinguished from B12 deficiency because there are no neurologic symptoms. Acidenosylmethionine, or SAM, is an amino acid derivative that's required for methyl transfer reactions, such as the synthesis of homocysteine from methionine or epinephrine from norepinephrine. SAM is produced by combining ATP with methionine. B12 and folate are both required to regenerate methionine, and therefore to regenerate SAM. This is because, to synthesize methionine from homocysteine, you need tetrahydrofolate to donate a methyl group and B12 to act as a cofactor for the reaction. Biotin is a water-soluble vitamin found mostly in nuts and is a cofactor that carries carboxylate, which is used in lipid and carbohydrate metabolism reactions. There are three major reactions that utilize biotin, and I want to skip ahead to the summary of pathways slide to show you how they fit in the big picture. The first is the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase. This is both an anaplerotic reaction for the TCA cycle, which means that it replenishes oxaloacetate if it gets low, and it's also important for gluconeogenesis, since that starts with oxaloacetate. 
That being the case, which organs do you think have the highest expression of pyruvate carboxylase? That would be the liver and the kidneys, since those are responsible for almost all gluconeogenesis. The second reaction is the conversion of acetyl-CoA to malonyl-CoA by acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which as you can see is important for fatty acid synthesis. The third reaction is the conversion of propionyl coenzyme A to methylmalonyl coenzyme A by propionyl coenzyme A carboxylase, and this is necessary for the catabolism of odd-chain fatty acids and branched-chain amino acids. Notice that all three of these enzymes have the word carboxylase in them. If you see carboxylase, think biotin. Also know that reactions involving biotin will add one carbon to the substrate, such as going from three to four carbons here, or from two to three carbons here. Deficiency in biotin is pretty rare, but it can be caused by some antibiotics and raw egg ingestion, because egg whites contain the protein avidin, which avidly binds to biotin, preventing its absorption. Signs and symptoms of biotin deficiency include dermatitis, alopecia, and enteritis. Vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, is a water-soluble antioxidant found in fruits and vegetables. It plays a role in iron homeostasis by keeping it in its 2 plus reduced form so that it can be more easily absorbed. Vitamin C is also necessary for the hydroxylation of proline and lysine in collagen synthesis, and is necessary for dopamine beta hydroxylase to convert dopamine to norepinephrine. In general, the symptoms of vitamin C deficiency are secondary to the role of vitamin C in collagen synthesis. If you can't make collagen, blood is going to start leaking out of your gums, joints, and other places, and the blood loss will cause anemia. Also, since collagen deposition is an important part of wound healing, you can't do that very well either. Here's a picture of some petechial submucosal hemorrhages in the tongue, which are also caused by this defect in collagen synthesis. Lastly, vitamin C deficiency can also cause a weakened immune response. Excess vitamin C can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, and sleep problems. Also, since this prevents iron from being utilized, the iron can accumulate to toxic levels, especially in people who are already predisposed to iron toxicity, such as those dependent on recurring blood transfusions or patients with hereditary hemochromatosis, which causes too much iron to be absorbed from the diet. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin found in dietary sources such as fortified milk. There are several different forms of vitamin D. The D2 form is called ergocalciferol and is acquired from plants, whereas the D3 form, colocalciferol, is in fortified milk and produced in sun-exposed skin. D3 is the more important one, and when it's hydroxylated in carbon-25, is in its storage form, whereas when it's hydroxylated on carbons-1 and 25, it's in its active form, which is called calcitriol. Vitamin D plays a role in bone metabolism by regulating calcium homeostasis. It functions to maintain plasma calcium levels by increasing intestinal absorption of calcium and also phosphate. It also reduces calcium excretion from the distal tubules in the kidney and can cause bone resorption to mobilize more calcium. This will be discussed in more depth in the endocrine section. Vitamin D deficiency can cause a disease known as rickets in children, which manifests as soft bones that bend under the weight of the body. There's also a genetic disease that I mentioned in the genetic section called hypophosphatemic rickets, in which the vitamin D receptor is mutated. Do you remember the transmission pattern of this disease? It's actually one of the few X-linked dominant diseases. In adults, vitamin D deficiency can decrease bone density, but they won't bend since they're already fully developed, and this is known as osteomalacia. Since vitamin D helps maintain sufficiently high levels of calcium, its deficiency can cause hypocalcemia, which affects physiology in a few ways. Do you remember what these are? You can see one of the main ones listed here, which is tetany, and this happens because having low calcium in serum allows sodium to enter cells, causing depolarization and therefore a spontaneous muscle contraction. Hypocalcemia can also cause arrhythmias and seizures. Since D3 is formed in sun-exposed skin, deficiency occurs more commonly in dark-skinned patients. Also, since breast milk does not have very much vitamin D, babies whose diet consists of mostly or all breast milk and have minimal sun exposure should receive vitamin D supplementation. Excess vitamin D can cause hypercalcemia, which in turn results in hypercalciuria, since the body tries to get rid of the excess calcium by excreting it into the urine. In addition to excessive dietary intake, vitamin D excess can also be caused by sarcoidosis, in which vitamin D is activated by epithelioid macrophages.